Hello, and welcome to episode 19 of Sports Betting Conversations. Today, we're joined by Patty Casey, co-founder of The Unit, and Kevin Twitchell, advisor at Data Art. Today's episode is titled, The Unit, Retaining Players with Better Products and Personalization. Uh, so, Patty, thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, you know, please tell a little, a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you get to where you are? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Um, so, yeah, so Paddy Casey, I'm one of the founders of of the unit, and we're a product development and uh, marketing company based out of a place called Dundalk in Ireland. Um, we've been operating since 2018, um, predominantly doing uh, marketing, marketing tech, uh, social media management, um, you know, digital ads management um, in regulated betting markets. So, uh, you know, we worked in Ireland, the UK, um, different parts of, um, of Canada before before um, before Ontario was regulated. Um, working with brands like um, before before they got acquired by Bally's, uh, VIP Casino, um, Monkey Knife Fight, um, Palette Interactive. Uh, we've worked with uh, with Sport Caller and Free to Play Guys in Dublin. Um, do lots of work in South Africa with Palace Bet and Lulabet on the Malco platform. Um, and recently, we've kind of set up a um, a development division. Um, and our work is done between uh, Ukraine and Kishinev in the Republic of Moldova. Um, management and product management, project management and program management is done from, from Ireland. Um, and then we have teams that supplement the different parts of a business in, in different parts of the world. So um, so that's the business side. I come from kind of betting and gaming background. I started my career in 2007, I think it was, in, with Boyle Sports in, in Ireland. Um, left there in 2013 and went to Gibraltar like lots of Europeans do. Um, stayed there for um, stayed there for two years and then went to London to an agency called Grand Parade where I met Andy Clarkson. So Andy's now an advisor uh, um, with with the unit. Um, in terms of uh, you know uh, kind of your specialty, like like what what you focus on. You, you mentioned you know you do some marketing technology. Uh, there's uh, um, kind of work around you know product development as well. Uh, kind of what, what do you consider kind of the unit's you know sweet spot? Um, interesting questions because uh, we we've just hired a new director of business development, uh, a guy called Rob Egan who used to work for for Bally's, uh, and we we met during the sport collar days. He worked at sport collar for for a number of years, um, and. Um, one thing that I had said to him and um, was that you know we we can do everything and that's that's uh, that's kind of difficult from a sales perspective to say that you can do anything and you know we'll build you anything we'll market anything we'll support anything um, but I think certainly um, because all of our all of our all of our I suppose our the, the management within our business we we come from working in. Um, in, in operator backgrounds. So one thing that we've we've all have in common is we've worked with good agencies and, and bad agencies. And that can be from, from a brand agency, a marketing agency to, you know, somebody managing a PPC budget or social media budget to um to a development partner. So we've taken all the learnings from uh from all of our operator side and we've applied those to to the unit. So certainly I think very strong focus on you know KPI driven and marketing results from some of the campaigns that we manage on behalf of our clients, um, um, marketing technology. So, uh, which is particularly uh, particularly with with the US in mind, uh, you know there was obviously a big rush for um, for for operators and 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 their their products to get live in the states after after the repeal in two eighteen. Um, so all of that's slowing down now, so from a sports betting perspective. So um, I think we'll probably see less of, you know, the Jimmy Fox style adverts versus, um, you know, lots more focus on, um, on retention. So that you know, um, so um, plus the ability to to understand, you know, where players are spending their time, um, and listen to them as a stakeholder, as as you know, a more than a better. So, um, I suppose a, a roundabout way of answering your question, we've we've 
A, taking all our um, experience from working on operator side. B, um, the insights that we have from a marketing point of view, and then that 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 feeds into our uh, product development process. So I like I'd like to think that you know yes we're good at everything, but certainly product development and um, and um, and marketing with respect to betting and iGaming in, in regulated markets very very strong there. Yeah, it sounds like you know what you're you're doing in terms of um, you know either you know setting your strategy or adjusting your strategy based on you know what you see other companies do uh, well or not so well. Maybe more importantly, not so well, um, and, and also to kind of the changing landscape. As you said, like 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 this year, it's all about retention. Um, so I mean that that's commendable because um you know a lot of companies that kind of get in their own way and really don't take a step back and take a look okay you know what are our competitors or other um companies in the industry doing where we can do better right and take advantage of that situation so i mean that that's a smart approach yeah yeah and it's that kind of two-way thing where you know we're working with um you know we're working with with some really really good brands at the moment so we do work with you know, play stock casino in in New Jersey, and yes, we can build those guys of products, and we can we can help them with marketing tech. But they've also got so many brains within their organization that you know, as part of that that relationship, we learn a lot from those guys as well. Um, you know, so we're not sticking our heads in the sand and saying yes, we'll just build you this and we'd walk away. It's very much well, you know, we're very good at this and you're very good at that, um, and let's work together to bring the best possible product to to the market. Yeah, and uh, I, I think it's especially important uh, in, in, the, in the sports betting market, um, specifically with um, uh, uh, sports books that have uh, thoughts going into casino or, or, or gaming as well, which, you know, yeah. maybe not something that's going to be fully uh, in place this year, but I think within the next couple of years, there's strong possibility because in the States, I think there's only several states that do allow, um, you know, uh, casino type betting online. Uh, well, New Jersey is one. <laughs> you know, you know, I, th- I think it's fine. And there might be one that has, has, is gone to, is gone to, you know, for, for, um, for some state votes and stuff like that. But, but you're absolutely right. And do you know, like the European approach to, to acquisition was always, you know, um, you know, focus on focus on 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 casino because it, it's a lot cheaper to acquire a player on sports and then flip them to casino, uh, and it's not necessarily probably won't necessarily work like that in the states. Uh, but like I said, it's still a very um, it's still a very young and immature market compared to Europe, for example. So, uh, and I think the landscape will change, um, you know, quite significantly with more regulation. I think. I think from a challenger brand perspective, like take New Jersey, for example, where you might have, you know, 58 or 59 and and, and maybe that's not the right number, but it's probably not too far away from it, um, regulated operators. So outside of FanDuel, DraftKings, BetMGM, I mean, the, the challenger brands, particularly the challenger brands, they're going to need to do something very, very different um, to be able to retain their players. And I think that will come with better products. Um, personalization, I think, for players will be will be absolutely key. Um, and again, listening to players as if they're a stakeholder and they're not just a better, whether that be you know a sports better or a, a casino player, uh, will listen to their uh, to their customers and stakeholders and then implement um, you know better better, better products. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I mean, oh, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I just lost comment on that uh, and. That point I've heard made several times over the past like six to, to nine months where um, the actual users right of, of, of these apps, they uh, don't have a seat at the table in terms of, you know, what, what they you know, would like to see. Uh, you know, sports books come up with whatever features and, and uh, offerings and, you know, you use it. And, and it seems like there's no good feedback me- mechanism um, from from the users, um, I know I have a ton of ideas which you know I've shared you know, internally, uh, but I'm sure people who are maybe more avid gamblers than myself uh, 
have even more ideas. So, um, yeah, I, I think it might start turning that way, especially going back to the point of retention. I'm sorry, I think Kevin was going to was going to say something. Oh, I, I think you just keep talking about Jersey, and I'm sitting here in in Jersey as we were talking earlier, <laughs> and it's been amazing since sports betting has come on how much marketing I've witnessed. You know, from the big boys, from Caesars spending their billion dollars, to everybody that launches in New Jersey, and it's on every one of my platforms and mediums. But now I'm seeing more and more they've got me very confused. The marketers. Right, so so I go to a Devils game. I'm the furthest thing from a Devils fan you'll ever meet. Okay, out of sight, I'm a Bruins fan, but I keep getting pushed. You know, Devils. Uh, you know, bet on this, bet on this, bet on this. How are you going to sort that out? You know, state by state, or to make that, you know, that customer as you talk that that one on one marketing because I think that's where it's going to understand me better as a as a as a consumer. Yeah, yeah, no, I I couldn't agree with you more. I think a um, couple of things on on the product side. And bear in mind, these are just these are just my opinions. Um, so, um, I think from a product point of view, I think U.S. customers, as that market becomes more mature and U.S. consumers become more educated, I think they'll demand cleaner navigation, cleaner, quicker purchase path. Sorry, so. Purchase path be registration, deposit, withdrawal, a wager. So, you know, step forward, prop betting, for example. And unless and what Europeans are used to, because the products that we see now are, are kind of European facing products, really. And uh, because that's, you know, was let's get let's get products live quickly. Um and and to a certain extent that has worked all right. Um and one point that you just mentioned, Kevin, about um, you know, seeing marketing material on, on all of your platforms. So I think if we if we if we think of a fan in general, right? So they they don't just want to place their bets and and sit back. You know, we think especially in the Euro, in, in the US market that they want to be part of an event. So today's younger fans are getting their sports information, you know, on social media. So platforms like TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, mm-hmm. podcasts like this. And I think of betting companies in particular or to thrive in, you know, new environments, very province-like uh, pools of customers, then they're going to have to adapt to those norms with their products and their marketing, or or risk losing out. And I think a recent report I I, I read, upwards of seventy percent of millennial sports fans to dual screening while they're watching live sports. Um, oh, oh so, three three screens uh, in my house. It's the it's it's multiple screens. You know, you've got the social going the social betting conversation going and then the game on TV or multiple summer seat, you know? Um, so, um, yeah. So I think, um, you know, a dual, a dual screen, we, we've heard a lot in Europe about second screen experiences and there's, there's not that many, there's not that many places do it. Or if there is places doing it, you know, they're, they're not doing it very well. Um, so, um, so yeah, that would be, I think product would be a big battleground, um, and I think, uh, I think, and and that leads into customer engagement and personalization, um, you know. And essentially, I don't think any one any one of those three um, three buckets, I suppose, will you know. I think you need to do all three right: get your product right, get your engagement right, and and serve users with personalized information and personalized opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that uh, sounds like a, a win, winning formula. It's just that you know, executing it really takes you know, focus and the right people in place. And uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like like when when um, sports betting went live right here in New York, uh, you know, it was kind of like a wild wild west in terms of you know all these offers, right? Like crazy offers from crazy, yeah, FanDuel and DraftKings. Caesars, um, but uh, yeah, it seems to have like simmer down now. Um, some uh, operators are, are leaving um, uh, the state. I think uh, points bet might be. I think they're talking about selling their U.S. operations now, um, which which is too bad. I always kind of like their website. This is just a personal take, um, and they also yeah. had a have a pretty active uh, 
Twitter account, but something was, was, was missing there. Maybe it was just the, the marketing, but um, yeah, in terms of um, kind of the uh, usability of the app versus some of the other ones that I, yeah, I thought they were like right at the top. Um, so, you know, unfortunate that they're exiting, but we're going to have a, a pretty big new entrant soon, which, which will be interesting how fanatics does in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, you know, and, and that probably, you know, rose into, you know, what's, what's the future of the U S market, so to speak. Um, and, you know, I think, I think certainly a lot of Europeans had hedged their bets on California becoming regulated and, and, um, a, a lot of people around maybe my age were, were hoping to, um, you know, to, to move out there and enjoy the, and um, yeah. all the nice things California has to offer all, versus all the high taxes you have to pay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you may be so, better off in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, um, I think certainly from a sports sports betting perspective, and you know, we we've seen this in Europe for years, and I think it's it's um, you know, the key driver of growth is, you know, higher adaptation of, of in play wagering. Uh, plus plus parlays, um, I think that's going to be that's going to be absolutely huge. I think, um, um, I think as more as more states, um, you know, become um, receptive to, to eye jamming, um, I can age. Um, you know, I think uh, we'll 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 probably see maybe not by the end of next year, the end of maybe twenty twenty five. You would. Expect to see upwards of maybe fifteen or twenty states would have you know legalized casino casinos. I I think, um, um. So so yeah, that's that's what we think. Uh, you know, good product, better product, um, focus on personalization, um, focus on customer engagement, um, and um, and um, yeah, and and that that's that's uh, that's that's where we think Mark is going. Uh, you know, where do you see kind of the future of sports betting and gaming in general? Not only um, in the U.S. but but globally, where do you see it going? Um, I think I think from our side, so we've kind of been focused on on North America because, like some of the some of the clients I mentioned earlier, we've been kind of working since we 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 set up in early 2018. But you know, we are we're getting calls from certainly more exotic places again. I think. Um, you know, Latin America has been particularly uh, busy and and quite hot for a while. Um, you know, again, European market is still very very mature. African market is 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 kind of growing at a at a huge pace. So, you know, while the US is still huge, I think <clears throat> there's going to be lots of consolidation there, especially with the states slowing down. Uh, states slow states slowing down from a sports perspective. Sorry. Um, and there's only you know so many suppliers that can make a real difference to to the bottom line of of the larger operators. So, um, yeah, in in this industry, I think you know everyone for a point was U.S. focused. Uh, but I think um, you know eyes are eyes are wandering and heads are turning. And I think certainly Latin America, Europe will 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 probably never slow down, um, and Africa in particular. Um, so. I think um, in a recent article we said we we do have to do some phone calls at very strange times, um, and um, and 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 we love doing those. But uh, that's that's our view, anyway. So, yeah, yeah thank you, thank you for that. Uh, well, I think uh, that will do it for today. Uh, thank you, Batty, for joining us. You know, this was really interesting, and uh, you know, we we kind of didn't even look at our. Uh, watches here i think things went very very quickly and uh we appreciate you know, all the time uh you gave us today great yeah thanks a lot for uh thanks a lot for having having me on russell and kevin it was uh good to chat yep all right.